this quick and easy tutorial for resizing the viewer in the Final Cut Pro. The one viewer will show both what is visible when you're editing as well as what will be seen in the exported video. And these views can be different and confusing as to know which is which. So knowing the difference is important. This video will clear up that confusion for good and it'll show you some hidden tips along the way. I'll also explain what that little red square is that sometimes appears in the viewer. For this exercise, I'm using a 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second project, and that's a rectangle shape. If you take nothing more away from this video than to realize the most important thing is to be sure you know what's being exported in the video. And that's everything within the rectangle in the viewer. That's what's seen in the exported video. For clarity, I'm going to call that the export rectangle so you know what I'm talking about. And so to be absolutely sure, it's the area within the blue dots. In the normal fit view, you see just the export rectangle without any outside area being shown. To show that outer area, you can change the size of what you see in the viewer. Think of that outside area as the canvas on an artist's easel. The paintings on the canvas and the outer area is where the artist attaches notes, etc. In Final Cut, that outer area is black. And so for clarity here, I'm going to call that the palette. First, I'll show you with no video in the timeline. Here's the fit view. And here's the same view with the palette showing. And it's hard to see between the two blacks which is which. But you'll see in a minute a much clearer view. Next, this is how it looks with the clip in the timeline and the blue dots showing. Here's the fit view. And now with the palette showing. So how do you show the palette? Select the percentage in the top right of the viewer. It'll most likely be ticked as fit, which means that the outer area will not be visible as the whole export rectangle fits exactly in the viewer. When fit is selected, the percentage number will show. Yours may be a different size. For this exercise, I'm going to select a smaller percentage view, let's say 50%. I guess you may be asking by now, why would you want to see the palette anyway? And the answer to that is, if you want to zoom into part of the image and see just a part, then you need to be able to change that size. And if you want to increase the size of the image to be exported, you need to use the blue corner dots to resize. And when in the fit view, it's hard to see those corner dots because they're right at the edge of the viewer. Also in fit view, you don't see outside the export rectangle. So right click in the viewer and select transform. When you reduce the size of the viewer, those dots are much more obvious and easy to select. And also note that if the layer button is selected, you can see what is outside the export rectangle as well as what's inside it. Now let's see what the different dots do. To resize an image, always use a corner dot. When you drag out, you zoom into an image. When you drag in, you show the clip in the layer below. The whole image is resized from the center point. And a really good tip to be able to resize just one side of the export rectangle, hold the option key while you drag one of the corner dots. The opposite corner stays in place. At any time, you can reposition the image by dragging inside the dots. And be careful with the center dot as that rotates the image. The edge dots reshape the image. And all of these actions can also be done in the inspector, as well as using the curly arrow to reset the image back to the original size. Now let's look at that red square that occasionally appears in the viewer. Up to now, I've been making the viewer area smaller so that you can see the palette. And there'll be times when you want to increase the size of the viewable area, and particularly if you want to use something like the draw mask effect. So let's say I want to cut this lighthouse out. 
it'd be really helpful to see the lighthouse in a bigger view. So select 400%. The lighthouse is no longer in view. So by using the red square, you can see it's in the middle of that small rectangle. If you move the red to the top left, you see the top left of the lighthouse image. And the bottom right, the bottom right of the image. And the draw mask will be much more accurate now you can see more. Now return to fit and you'll see that the red square has gone away. And a tip, when you've got images smaller or a different shape from the export rectangle, you may not see the standard black background that comes with Final Cut. I'll add that lighthouse clip at the end of the timeline by pressing the E key. It's not obvious at this point that that's a different shape from the 16x9 project. So I'll show you how to see the background more clearly with a checkerboard. Select Preferences from the Final Cut Pro menu. In the Playback tab, select Checkerboard. Now you can see the different shapes of the project and the lighthouse image. And there is a quick way to resize this image, but you would need to know that the black bars were there in the first place, so hence the value of the checkerboard. In the Inspector under Spatial Conform, select Fill and the image will resize. I hope that clears up the different ways you can view and use the viewer. And before you finish, return the background to black from checkerboard and in the viewer, change the size back to fit. Thanks for watching and please like, subscribe and press the bell.